This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Is Falcon Heavy the most powerful rocket? Well, it certainly isn't in history. We've had the Section 5 that landed our astronauts on the moon, which still represents one of the pinnacles of human achievement. We've also had the Space Shuttle with one of the most audacious reusable designs in the early 1970s. Although the program ended in less than satisfactory outcomes, the shuttle itself is still one of the most capable rockets ever built by man. Then we've got Falcon Heavy, the vehicle that's widely believed to be the most powerful rocket operational and a transition for an even more audacious design, the Big Falcon rocket. But wait, Falcon Heavy has only flown once and all it sent is this mannequin and an old Tesla. How do we even know in the first place? that it is the most powerful rocket. Well, first of all, rocket launches are a rare event. At our peak, which is in the 1960s and 70s, we were launching at a frequency of around 100 per year. That means every year, only around 500 or more engines were produced and just over 100 rocket bodies were manufactured. Taking into consideration the different types of rockets and different engines on the same rockets, different stages, the number goes to the double digits. Take the most famous Saturn V as an example, as glorious as the vehicle, we've flown it a dozen times, which means only less than 70 Rocketdyne F1 were produced for the first stage and around 80 Rocketdyne J2 were manufactured for the second and third stage. So throughout its lifetime, 10 engines each were made every year. This limited production requirements means that there was never going to be economies of scales and the production cost of rockets had to remain very high. That was the reason why we paid billions of dollars per Saturn V launch. What this also means is that we will never be able to accurately judge the capability of a rocket by the actual payload they've launched. Specific rocket models were launched less than five times per year, and more often than not, they do not exhaust all of their payload capabilities for the sake of safety and reliability. That's why the Falcon Eye is rated to be able to launch a payload that weighs 23 tons but the heaviest payload it has completed so far was less than 10 tons. This makes comparing rockets quite hard. The conventional ways to compare rockets include the following. By payload capability and by cost. They're capability-based comparison that gives us a good understanding of what different rockets can do under different budgets. For example, if we're comparing the most hyped rockets right now, SpaceX Falcon Heavy and BFR with Blue Origin's new clan and Boeing's space launch system, we would know that Falcon Heavy could be a good contestant to its competitors and BFR's capability is far ahead. These are indicated by their payload capability numbers and their cost. However, this kind of analysis is often too simplistic. The devil is in the details. For example, oftentimes when people look at Falcon Eye's capability, they overlook the fact that Falcon Eye is reusable and some of the launch numbers are in fact reusable numbers. Expandable Falcon Eye are significantly more powerful, so is Falcon Heavy. The heaviest payload ever sent by Falcon Eye weighs 9,600 kilograms, but it was sent with an reusable Falcon Eye. Expandable versions of Falcon Eye is capable to do more. This is when the more telling metrics like specific impulse and thrust to weight ratio comes in. I sometimes mention these two metrics in my video because they're independent to the size of the rocket. Both of them are ratios, therefore, they indicate per unit performance. The specific impulse reflects the energy efficiency. The higher the number, the higher the thrust generated per unit to propellant. Thrust to weight ratio, on the other hand, reflects the performance of the engine. The higher the number, the more payload you can bring to orbit. So for a powerful rocket, you want both numbers to be high because that means you have a rocket which sends more payload to orbit with the least amount of fuel. This is for intermediate level analysis and is sufficient for most understanding of rockets. However, there is still another level of analysis above it. That requires a good understanding of the design principles of rockets. The simple idea is this. Design principles directly dictate the future of the rocket. SUV is designed to be an SUV and a sports car is designed to be a sports car. You can't force a Lamborghini to be safer than an SUV, neither can you force a semi-truck to go as fast as a sports car. You get my point. Different rocket with different design objectives result in different outcomes. That is why SpaceX is now building BFR. No matter how much you upgrade and how many boosters you strap onto a Falcon 9, the vehicle is designed for Earth orbits and hence will be best suited for Earth orbit missions. For Mars missions, 
SpaceX needs BFR with the capability of in-orbit refueling and eventually use methane on Mars for its return missions. This goes even further when we're talking about manned missions. How is the vehicle going to shield astronauts from radiation? How to ensure a comfortable temperature during re-entry? All of those problems need to be thoroughly discussed and thought out during design. It will be almost impossible or at least costly to change after development starts. This is why Starship has just recently adopted stainless steel alloy as its body material. The material is developed in-house called SX500. The most important design aspect right now is reusability. SpaceX is leading the way. Boeing Starliner capsule is also designed to be reusable. India's RSLV is in development and the Chinese are also working on its own reusable Long March 8. In the future, any vehicle that is not reusable will simply be outcompeted by reusable ones because of its flawed design. No matter how you optimize it, it will still be too expensive because you are throwing away rockets while your competitors use them multiple times. Design choices also dictate the kind of mission it can perform. BFR, for example, uses methane and liquid oxygen as fuel. This is obviously designed with Mars in mind, as methane is believed to be available on the surface of Mars. So it is not inconceivable that BFR would do much better than other rockets in terms of Mars missions. So is Falcon Heavy the most powerful rocket right now? I think the answer is yes. In addition to its great performance as indicated by capability numbers, it also has a much more future-proof design. Reusability, smaller engines with engine-out capability, reusable second stage and soon-to-be reusable fairings, not to mention its choice of materials. Eventually, it will be replaced by BFR, but before it happens, Falcon Heavy sits comfortably on top. Before you go, if you want to learn the technical details and engineering that goes behind SpaceX and many other engineering companies, Brilliant.org is a great toolbox for that. It is also the sponsor of today's video. Just recently, Brilliant launched a new feature called Daily Problems. So in addition to helping you structure your engineering knowledge through problem-solving courses, Daily Problems also help you make learning a daily habit. Every day, Brilliant publishes several problems that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, logic, science, engineering, and computer science. My recommendation for you today is to start with this problem on interplanetary speedup. Where should you speed up your spaceship so as to take full advantage of the gravitational slingshot effect? Go to brilliant.org slash Curious Elephant today and sign up for free. First 200 people click on the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription, so you can access all the daily problems in the archives. By doing so, it also helps this channel, so a big thank you from me as well. So let me know in the comment down below if you agree with me. Do you think design objectives is as important as I put forward today? Uh, do you think there are other factors that I should be taking into consideration into comparing rockets? Or do you think there are some other objectives that are more important than the capability of a rocket, right? So let me know in the comment down below. Also, I want to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters, especially the ones on the screen. Uh, thank you all for sticking around with me. If any one of you guys want to be a part of the ideation process of the videos, do head on to patreon.com slash Curious for that. Uh, I'll see you there.